buying cycling clothing is not the same as buying normal casual clothing. Yes, you still want to look cool, but you also need to make sure that it really works well. If you don't, then what you're going to find over the winter months is you're going to have a few rides where you feel absolutely miserable. Yeah, we have had those rides. So here are our tips on how to choose clothing for the winter that we have learned the hard way on many a long ride. Lesson 101 when it comes to purchasing winter cycle clothing is to pay close attention to the fabric with which the garments are made. First and foremost, they need to be breathable. That's really, really important. Yeah, breathable clothes won't stop you sweating, nor will they regulate your body temperature. But what they will do is wick sweat away from your skin and through the layers of fabric. So when you're working hard, you will still get damp, but not to the same extent you would with a non-breathable fabric. And in fact, if you don't work too hard at all, you'll stay dry all day. Day long. The base layer or the vest that you wear against your skin is probably the most important thing to get right when it comes to winter bike riding. Now natural fibres such as merino wool do work quite well but I'm personally more of a fan of the man-made fibres particularly those super thick nice and snug winter specific base layers which I find give a disproportionately large effect to your warmth versus how much they actually cost. Outer layers are really, really important too. Now, waterproof fabrics are never quite as breathable as ones that are just windproof. So you might find that if you spend all day riding around in your rain jacket, that you may end up feeling a little bit damp and uncomfortable. Whereas if you were just wearing a windproof, that actually you'd be nice and dry and comfortable in everything right up to proper rain. So breathable fabric is really, really important to your comfort, but the fit of your clothing is also really worth paying close attention to, particularly for the more performance-oriented rider. Yeah, at the top end of the market, you might actually feel a little bit strange when you first get the kit on, but that's because it is designed and tailored and cut for performance when you're on the bike. To take, for example, first off, the sleeves. They're pretty long, but they do stop that annoying gap between the edge of your gloves and the sleeve cuff. And then they've got a long hem at the back to protect your lower back and keep it warm. But again, when you first get the kit on, it is the one thing that you notice in relation to the sleeves. But once you've been riding a while, it feels very comfortable and quite normal. So for those of us interested in going fast, a close fitting kit is absolutely essential. Now, you need to maybe try a few different brands out or at least be prepared to mix up your sizes in order to get it fitting perfectly. So this Bellwether jersey fits me really nicely and I'm a size small, despite being over six foot tall. Yet when I wear a Santini kit, I tend to go for a medium or a large, because it tends to be a bit more closely fitted. We've already mentioned the importance of base layers, but we'd like to go a step further and say that we think they're one of the key pieces of your winter collection. Now, cycling kit can be very expensive, so if you're economising and building up your collection of kit piece by piece, then these are the pieces to concentrate on. Yeah, so along with a good base layer, we would thoroughly recommend a well-fitting thermal jersey and a windproof top to go over the top. The combination of which should mean you're comfortable right down to when the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius. Now, next up, it's overshoes. Now, to the non-initiated, they can sound a little bit counterintuitive, so putting socks over your shoes, but they really do work and are an absolutely essential piece of your winter kit. Now, putting thick socks under your shoes can lead to you getting cramped toes and actually reduce your circulation, so your feet will get even colder. But if you stick a windproof, sometimes waterproof layer over the top of your shoe, your feet are most likely going to be toasty all day long. Yeah, and when the mercury drops even further, all you need to do is try putting a second pair of overshoes over the top of them. Now, if that's still not enough, then you might need to try something different, like thinking about your ankles and making sure that the rest of your legs are warm, something which should never be forgotten. And the same thing really applies to your hands. If a good pair of gloves is not enough, make sure that you keep your wrists and your forearms really warm as well. Conventional wisdom when it comes to outdoor clothing dictates that layering is key. So a number of thin layers which allow you to regulate your temperature and stay comfortable. But with modern cycle clothing, this isn't necessarily true. That's right, particularly with high-end kit, the fabric is so highly developed now that actually 
two layers might just be the way to go. Now, of course, it does depend exactly on what winter means to you, but I have ridden in just two layers right down to minus 10 degrees and still been comfortable. Yeah, with two layers, regulating your temperature is really easy because you've got just one zip. You'll also be more aerodynamic and moisture will find it easy to escape because there are far fewer barriers to its progress. Yeah, this jersey is a great example. So it's windproof in key areas and it's just got a warm fabric in others and when combined with a really great base layer it keeps me warm, dry and fast. Now if the temperature does drop then a fully windproof and thermal jersey is probably the way to go but as I said that's kept me warm right down to minus 10. Finally let's talk about colour. Now not in terms of style although as we well know Dan is fully qualified more in terms of safety. Yeah, riding through the winter months inevitably means riding when there's poor visibility as well as poor weather. So when you're choosing your outer layer, you should bear that in mind. Going for bright colours or maybe something even fluoro like Sai is wearing today will really make sure that you stand out to other road users. And if you do any riding at night, top of your priority list should be reflective strips and panels on your outer clothing which will glow up really brightly when the headlights catch them. Now, if you do still want to wear black, that is, of course, completely up to you, but it could be sensible to at least have a rear light. Now, in fact, regardless of the colour kit you're wearing, it is always a pretty good idea to have a light with you, especially with darker kit. So if you're just starting out in your winter kit collection or you're just refining your existing one, remember to go for fabrics that are breathable and also kit that fits quite closely. And also consider that layering up isn't necessarily the answer anymore. And if you're on a little bit of a budget, try and focus on one or two key pieces. And finally, a decent base layer and some nice overshoes will keep you comfy for not too much money at all. Hmm. Now we've got plenty more tips for you for various types of winter riding. So if you click just up there, there you'll see our top 10 tips for wet weather riding. And down there are some 10 winter riding mistakes. Before you leave us though, do make sure that you subscribe to GCN. You can do that very quickly by clicking on our, I don't know, warm, comfortable and rather aerodynamic looking bodies. Indeed. And like it as well.